it kind of been ruined the moment because I was kind of just like in my own in my, in my own head like wow I can't believe I've done it and then suddenly Jeremiah winds up as the opponent from Mungia so <laughs> nice injury if, we, if it happens I am on the undercard yes people I am Savage Dan I'm Paulie Malinaji you are watching Mouthpiece, the official boxer podcast. This episode is sponsored by the Turmeric Co. The Turmeric Co. creates great taste in turmeric shots that harness the power of natural ingredients to support individuals on their wellness journey, offering anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, energy and immunity booster benefits. Welcome back to Mouthpiece. This episode is brought to you by the Turmeric Co. As always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all of that. Uh, I am Savage Dan. I'm Paulie Malinaji. Of course. And I'm not sure if you've heard the news, Paulie. Uh, there's a lot of news happening this week. The first one is, it's coming home. It's co- have you heard that? <laughs> not if Italy have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all, in all reality, there is huge news. Boxer have signed with Sky Sports. And for the next four years, we'll be working alongside uh, top rank Sky Sports bringing you massive, massive fights. There's going to be a, a full announcement coming in August, so stay tuned for that. That is big, big news. Um, I don't know how if people realize how huge. big this is going to be. It, it doesn't really get any bigger than Sky Sports. They've literally uh, been giants in boxing, especially in the UK, for the, the last 25 years. So uh, it's onwards and upwards for Boxer. Right, let's get on to the weekend's reviews. We had Shakur Stevenson, who, who won by a unanimous decision Probably could have, have pressed the, the stoppage, but uh, decided not to. What do you think of the, of the victory? Um, he's getting a bit of criticism, a bit of flack for uh, you know, being a bit boring. Um, here's the thing. I wouldn't give him so much criticism. I would keep in mind his age. He's only 22 years old. Um, if there wasn't the Floyd comparisons. Now, if, he, if it wasn't just the media yeah. giving the Floyd comparisons, I'd say, okay, you know what? The media, as usual, you know, overdo it. Uh, they, they're not very intelligent when it comes to no matter how many fights they watch. But yeah. it's not just the media. Shakur is also buying into this talk, um, talking about the defensive posture. Uh, the, the, I saw on the ESPN broadcast how, you know, Floyd was stronger at this weight, getting more KOs, but Shakur gets hit less. Well, if you're fighting... Minus 3,500 um, odds opponents, you know, you're probably going to get hit less at this age. Floyd was fighting, May, uh, he was fighting uh, Gennaro Hernandez, Angel Manfredi, Diego Corrales, to name a few. So, so uh, I, I wouldn't, I would if you start shying away from the Floyd comparisons, um, we're not going to have another Floyd. Let's, we just, we just got to try to have the first of the next generation, or whatever that is. Yeah. It would probably be less if you keep putting this, this. Uh, weight on these fighters shoulders they're bound to disappoint and they're bound to uh you know receive more criticism unnecessarily i think shakur is a talented fighter uh i don't and i I don't the he only brings criticism on himself when you start comparing him to floyd mayweather if not he's actually ahead of the curve for a 22 year old they did this to adrian broner as well you know they actually i remember they put him on the pound for pound list when he hadn't had a single solid Mm -hmm. win on his record yet i don't even know where the brainchild from that idea had come from but you know, it, they end up looking at him like a disappointment, even though Adrian has, mm-hmm. in fact, accomplished a lot in boxing. Because once you put that weight on somebody's shoulders that they're the next Floyd, they're never going to fill those shoes. It's, there's only one Floyd Mayweather, yeah. you know? So if you allow fighters to just blossom into their own, um, I think they can come into their own much better. And I think Shakur will have that opportunity if he kind of sh- steers himself away from all the Floyd Mayweather comparisons that the idiot media uh, put on him. Uh, are we kind of uh, causing this for ourselves as well? It, if you ask me, Shakur Stevenson had a very, very good performance. Uh, a casual fan is going to look at it and be like, no, we should have knocked him out. Is, is there, are, are we moving too far away from the sweet science? And, and should we just appreciate, you know, fighters for what they are? You know, if you are a 12 round fighter and, and, you, and your aim is to stay safe and, and to hit and not get hit, should there be pressure on your shoulders to force a stoppage if it's not you? You know, his opponent had a pretty good right hand coming into the fight, so it was a known entity. So you don't want to force the action too much. But at the same time, once you start taking control of the fight, you can probably press a little bit more. I wouldn't so much... Be, people are so black and white. Well, it's either stoppage or no stoppage. You know, you go, oh, he's got to get the stoppage. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't so much call it the stoppage. I would more, more so call it... Um, you know, throwing the extra combination or, or putting in the extra uh, uh, electric moment in the fight in the rounds. Even if you don't get the stoppage, you put on a more a more a brilliant, a more uh, shining performance. You know, um, he kind of went through the motions in the fight. 
it's fine. Um, he, if this guy had been even an ex world champion, um, you know, we could we could go through that. I remember Mayweather getting criticized when he fought Goyo Vargas, and Goyo Vargas, mm -hmm. you know, it was a kind of a this kind of fight where Mayweather was doing the same thing every round and dominating, but he wasn't pushing the action too much. And I remember Larry Merchant on HBO in the states uh, was, was criticizing him back then while he was commentating the fight, but in reality. Goyo Vargas at least was an ex world champion. He was a guy who had been there. You know, he was a guy who'd done that. So, you know, if, if, if Shakur wants to be able to have an out of these type of criticisms, he's got to start fighting uh, a bit better competition, I'd say. You know, uh, being a, a minus 3,500 favorite at, when you're fighting fights of this level is, is probably going to put you in, in right in the face of the oncoming train of criticism unless you absolutely. Yeah you know, spark the guy, you know, it, uh, if you're not going to do that and that's fine, not all, not all of us can, if you're not going to put on that kind of ag aggressive, more aggressive performance, then, then you've got to fight better opponents. And I think Shakur can beat better opponents. And then the, the learning curve, as far as the criticism is concerned, will diminish because people will just be happy you're yeah. beating these better opponents. You know, they won't expect so much out of you. So, um, you know, we'll see how he progresses. I think he's way ahead of the curve. I mean, the kid is only 22 years old. A uh, very, very good fighter. Um, before we move on, I want to talk about this weekend in the Ritz and Ponce fight. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it, Paulie, but the corner had thrown in a towel, deciding that, that Ritz had, had 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 enough, and the referee throws the towel back out. He eventually ends up getting stopped uh, not long after that. Um, but is it a poor decision? Is it a, is it a decision that should be made sometimes? It's very rare that we see a referee... Uh, disregard a corner's decision to, to, to pull the fight. Yeah, off. I've 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 seen uh, I've seen that happen before. I think uh, I believe Arthur McCanty did that to Yuri Foreman when he was fighting Miguel Cotto, um, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, it's a rare thing you see. I guess it's a uh, discretionary up to the referee. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, until I first saw it happen, I didn't even know it was allowed. I thought if I thought if the corner pulls you out of the fight, the corner pulls you out of the fight. You know, it because. Here's the thing, it kind of it kind of then puts all blame on the fighter when he gets stopped in the corner because if 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 yeah. the if the if the corner has this kind of non say when it comes to stopping the fight, then even if the corner says we got to stop the fight and the fighter says no, we, I got to I got to fight the fight, you know, then then uh I guess the fighter can supersede things, right? But at the same time, yeah. at the same time I've seen, you know, with Diego Corrales speaking of the Corrales Mayweather fight, I remember Diego Corrales being seething mad. I mean, he was red hot when the corner threw in the towel uh, in his fight against Mayweather and the referee allowed that towel to end the fight, you know? So, yeah. There's got to be a more concrete rule when it comes to boxing and this rules. I mean, it's typical boxing. They just kind of go at it as they, as it comes along. But in yeah. reality, is the towel the be-all end-all or is it up to the fighter? I mean, which one is it? Because it, depending on who the ref is, it's, it seems that the rule changes. And, and well, the referee had said that his reasoning for making the fight continue, essentially, was that he thought he, that Ritson had more in him. Yeah, I, I, I get is it. That, is it. Do you know what? I, I get it as well because he was still responding with punches. They were few and far between, but he was still responsive. He was still in the fight to a certain degree. But is that the referee's decision to make? Yeah, and 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 it's got to be concrete. That does have to be black or white. You know, that does have to be either he has the right to do that or he doesn't have the right to do that. It can't be that depending on the fight, depending on who's who's the referee, you know, it, it's enforced or it's not enforced. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's not on if it's not on the referee, then it's up on the fighter too. No, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's confusing as, as is a lot but of. But then things. we've seen we've seen ref stop fights that fighters wanted continued. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, the ref is the third man in that ring for a reason. His job is usually to save fighters um, rather than put them potentially in the face of more harm. Um, but I don't know. As you, I, I agree with you. I think there needs to be a more concrete ruling on this because it's a little bit too... Uh, just decisions can be made on a day that will never be made again for another six or seven months. And then... We need something a bit more concrete. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, I couldn't agree more. It's, 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 it's got to, it's got to make sense one one way or the other. It, it can't just be a, just take it as it comes along and just you know whatever rule you want to make up on that night you do. You know it can't be like that. Yeah. It's too often in boxing that's what it is. Right, prediction time. And this weekend there is not one, not two, not three, not four, but five major 
boxing events. I'm just showing you guys I can count. Um, one of the biggest ones, Inoue against Daz Marinas. He's 28 years old. He's, he's 20 and 0, 17 KOs. A tough prospect, you know. A lot of people may not have heard of him, but this record, you know, it's, it's quite rare for a fighter to get to, to 20, 20 and 0 with 17 KOs and be a relatively uh, unknown quantity. But it's definitely definitely looks like a fight. Yeah, yeah. On paper, I mean, just the having the O alone will usually bring more desire, more fire uh, out of a out of a fighter. You know, it'll uh, he'll bring more more tenacity into the ring. You know, because he doesn't want to lose that O. Plus, the fact that he has an O and it's a world title fight, I think will only add to that. You know, um, so I I expect him to you know be in the fight. I expect him to you know show up. But, man, Inouye right now is a tough one to beat. And I don't know a lot about Desmarino, so maybe he could surprise us. But, man, Inouye is a tough nut to crack right now. He is. He's a, t he's a, he's a tough one. But the, he's a lot of people are beginning vicious. to pick up on his, on his inactivity. Um, he, he obviously doesn't fight as often as people would like. Can that harm you as a fighter? What, what would you say is the, the, the optimum amount? You know, yeah, I'm, I'm I guessing mean, it's going to be slightly it's, different it's, for a heavyweight. It's possible, you know. Uh, you definitely want to keep a busy schedule. I mean, with the COVID stuff and all kinds of stuff we've been going through, it, it, mm -hmm. it has been a bit harder for some fighters to, you know, uh, keep a busier schedule. But, um, well, no, we'll see. You know, I, I don't think I know he has fought since, what, the Donaire fight? Was that the last time he fought? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's ha it has been. Uh, he's, he's, fought, he's fought twice in, in two years. Yeah. Obviously, COVID yeah. hasn't helped. Yeah. But. So, I mean, and, and I think... Uh, I, I think, um, you know, even that Donaire fight was important in his career because it showed he can do the 12 rounds because he's been getting everybody out of yeah. there so easily that, you know, we, we start to wonder, does this guy, what happens if this guy gets taken rounds? And Donaire yeah. took him the rounds and he, he, he passed that, that test. Uh, um, you know, he d dealt with some adversity in the fight as well. Uh, and he's battle tested. I mean, he's, I, I, I think he's going to be a tough nut to crack. We'll see what Daz Marino brings to the table. But I, I, I think he knows he's a, is, is a, it's hard, it's hard to pick against Inouye right now. With the thing is, pardon my ignorance on Daz Marine, of course. How, how long does a prime last? Because we've seen Inouye. We know he's been, he was high on the pound for pound list. Uh, he might have even been somewhere, might have been number one, to be fair, at, at one point, I'm sure. Um, maybe I'm wrong, because I keep to, I, I do that a lot. I always think that people are number one, but I'm sure at least he's fighter of the year. He's, he was, Listen, it's not, a was, it's not a definitive list. I mean, the pound for pound list is, a, is, a, is, a, is an imaginary list. So technically, Everybody can have their own pound for pound list. He can be on now some people's yeah. number one. I'm sure there's people in Asia. I was who have, going with a ring. Yeah, I'm sure there's people in Asia who have Inouye on the pound for pound number one. You know, it's yeah. it's not a, it's not a real ranking. You know, but when when you're in your prime, do you not want to be as active as you possibly can be? We're, we're seeing it with Canelo. He, he seems to be out there fighting every month because I, he uh, knows right I, now I, he's I a prime Canelo. I agree with that. Not only do you want to get be as busy as you can because you want to uh, get the m most out of your prime years, which where you have the ability to show how good you are in, in time in and time yeah. out but also you can make a lot of money <laughs> you know you yeah. fight a lot in your prime you know you're going to excel and when you excel you're going to make make more money uh up next we have Lopez against Cambosis Jr that will be his first fight i believe since dethroning Lomachenko um easy night's work for Lopez, I know you rate him very you know, highly. Yeah, I, I rate Lopez very high. Listen, Cambosos is is uh is, is not going uh, away that easily. It's it just comes down yeah. to the ability, and I just feel Telfimo is is uh, on another level. But Cambosos is uh he's a he's a he's a fighting man. He's 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 not gonna, he, and he's he's very prideful in that way. He's I've heard um he used to give uh, Manny Pacquiao great work uh in sparring. They used to bring him into the Philippines. I've heard through the grapevine um you know he was one of the main sparring partners. So you know to la to last in training camps with Pacquiao, you've got to at least have a a certain toughness, a certain ability. So I have no yeah. doubt that Cambosos is coming to fight and he's coming to uh to win the fight. I just think it comes think it comes down to ability. Uh he may be durable. He may last. Who knows? Maybe he's going to go 12. We'll see, you know. Uh yeah. but I just think Tofimo has too is too versatile, has too many too many weapons at his disposal, but not just the power. He's got a lot of speed. Um, uh, fights yeah. at fight. You can use the angles very well. Punches at different angles. It's explosive. It, it's. I have to pick Lopez, but Cambosos is a, is a respectable guy who I think some people underrate. Assuming you're correct and Lopez does make it through this fight, what next? Is it Haiti? Do we do we get it? Yeah, I think it comes down to Haney more so than Lopez. I also think that Lopez probably goes up to 
140 pounds soon. I, I, I question how long this guy can make the weight. He's a big lightweight, as is Haney, to be honest. But but I, yeah. uh, I'm i not sure. But Haney, Haney reminds me of the same kind of situation as Shakur Stevenson, minus the fact that um, Shakur has actually been a real world champion. But it's the same kind of thing. You know, Haney's a talented guy. He's uh, he's he's he looks very well for his age, um, as far as uh, the way he's boxing and and, and the, he's excelling and, and he's uh, climbing the ladder very well. Uh, it's once you start putting him into those conversations about being a world champion when he's not that you start going wrong, you know, because then you have to compare him to other world champions, and then you demand that Telfimo Lopez fight, you know. Then they, then you say why yeah. is he not making that fight, you know? Uh, why is he not fighting, uh, you know, guys like Lomachenko? Why is he? Why are, and why are they making it up that they're giving offers when they're not? When the proof shows that they're not, you know. So, so it's the same kind of thing. He's at a he's at a good point in his career. He's talented, and for uh, if you look at him from his age bracket, he's he's ahead of the curve. He's just not yeah. what he what. And again, the media will sometimes throw things on you that you know will they'll they'll make you get ahead of yourself. But it's up to you as a as a fighter and as a man to understand where you are. And continue that progression. Um, if you look at the progression of a 22-year-old, he's definitely ahead of the average 22-year-old even prospect. But um, nonetheless, uh, I wouldn't put him in the championship level yet. So I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't demand the Tofimo Lopez fight yet. But uh, if Haney's going to consider himself a world champion, then unfortunately for him, he's got to he make that to, make the, make that yeah. kind of effort. He's got to make that kind of effort. Also, this weekend we have Jamal Charlo against Montiel, and on paper, Paulie, it looks like a, a fight that should be. An open shot case. However, Montiel seems to win every fight of his by knockout. So it, it, there is definitely a danger there. Yeah, the thing is, Jamal also wins a lot of fights by knockout. Uh, you know, he's got a, a, the power uh, as well as uh, having the boxing ability behind it, coming off some good wins. Um, uh, you know, he's uh, he's really lighting up the middleweight division. And in my opinion, he's probably the only one around those weights that beats Canelo. Uh, Notwithstanding light heavyweight, I think some light heavyweights are going to be too big for yeah. Canelo. But I think if we're talking about super middleweight and middleweight, I think Jamal Charlo is the guy that beats Canelo. Um, I, I believe that's the fight really for him. Uh, we'll see how he looks against Montiel, who obviously comes in with a puncher's chance. But, I mean, Jamal is, has a really explosive style, um, really yeah. looking looking his best each and every fight. Uh, that Derevianchenko win was really, really impressive because Derevianchenko had trouble with a lot of guys. Um, and, and he forced Jamal to fight. But uh, Jamal... You know, passed that test and, and look good doing it. So he's a guy who really, really uh, is is one of those guys that if you're a true boxing fan, you really have to look forward to seeing. And yeah. you have to demand this Canelo fight because this is the one. This is the one that yeah. really, at, at this point, in my opinion, is, is the one to make for for Canelo with a, with a legitimate shot at beating Canelo. With all respect to guys like Caleb Plant, who is a good fighter, I just don't know that he beats Canelo. And that doesn't mean you're not a bad, you're not a good fighter just because you don't beat Canelo. Canelo is an excellent fighter. Yeah. But I do think Jamal is the guy that beats Canelo uh, if we, they were to fight right now. Well, let's see how he looks against Montiel, and there will be, obviously, opinions after that. I think so far we're agreeing on all of these. I think everyone has been a relatively simple victory. Uh, speaking of big punches, we have another one up this weekend. Munguia is fighting Zerimeta uh, in, in a fight that is, is a good fight. Munguia is one of the, 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 the best young prospects in the sport. Um, definitely a big puncher, sometimes quite crude and definitely very aggressive with his fighting style. Yeah, yeah, there's been a, a, a bit of a chaos making this fight because Munguia originally was going to fight Suleki, you know, and then uh, yeah. Suleki uh, ended up pulling out randomly. And I remember Jeremetta, was how do you spell his name? Jeremetta? Jeremetta? I, I'm going with Zeremet. Yeah, Jeremet. Be because who, who it starts also, with an S is, and a Z. Yeah, who also is a Polish fighter. He was fighting yeah. a good friend of mine, Junior Union, and he was going to fight Junior yeah. Union. And then Jeremet randomly pulls out of the Junior Union fight after Suleki pulls out of the Munguia fight. Munguia fight. And then, so my friend has no opponent because Jeremet says he pulled out with an injury. And then suddenly Jeremet <laughs> winds up as the opponent for Munguia. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice injury <laughs> the same night. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Munguia against Jeremetta. Jeremetta, uh, you know, was a was a was tough uh, in the Golovkin fight, but wasn't really competitive in the Golovkin fight. Yeah. Um. So we'll see how Munguia handles him. I I think he's you know he's a real, he's not a bad fighter, but we'll see how Munguia handles the the toughness and the skill. So I'm I'm guessing we're both going with Munguia. Uh. You know what? Yeah, I, I'd probably I'd probably angle towards Munguia, but I don't think it's that easy of a fight. I don't think because Munguia ah. hasn't Munguia hasn't really been that impressive lately. So we'll I want I want to see where he goes from here. I I think it's a, a a relative walk in the park. Let's call it not a walk in the park, but I feel like we haven't seen the best of Munguia recently, and I feel like now's the time for him to 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 perhaps up it. 
um, and give us. I think he's. We're overdue a big performance from him. I we think are. It's fair to we say. are. We, uh, as he's starting to uh, kind of not live up to the expectations. So we'll see if he yeah. we'll see if he can do it. Uh, also, I feel like every time we do this show, Paulie, we're we're talking about a YouTube fight, <laughs> crossover fight, an <laughs> MMA fight. Yeah. There's something else happening all the time. <laughs> well, I've got my own beef. Got I've got my one. own beef, as people probably saw. Oh yeah, you've got your own one as well. What's happening there? You know, it, I've got this. I've had this ongoing internet beef with Corey B, and uh, he's uh, he's actually got a morning radio show on 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 morning radio in New York. So he's it's a well known entity because it's actually a morning radio show yeah. in New York, but it it's broadcast in several cities around the United States. And he's just one of these guys who's a TikToker slash YouTube. I don't even know what to call these guys anymore because I'm not on this crap, you know. So so he's one of these guys, and every time they start boxing. You know, they've got like this whole thing where they, you know, they, everybody's the, the Paul brothers. I really believe the Paul brothers have, have committed to it. They've been boxing for years, years uh, in, in, in the plural, you know. So, you know, them doing this at this point, you've been boxing for years. Uh, you're actually a boxer. You know, and I, I, you know, the Paul brothers have, have committed to this thing. But I don't really enjoy that every single TikToker, Instagram or YouTuber just starts boxing a couple of months ago and suddenly they're a fighter. So he was talking about it and he was saying he's going to get a fight and this and that. And I was just like, bro. Cut it out already. You know, it's you guys like you are, are, are like yeah. completely watering down our whole sport because you've got an idiot generation. Instead of thinking about when you say the word boxing, instead of thinking of guys like Anthony Joshua or Canelo or something like that, they're thinking about YouTube fighters. You know, they think of boxing. They're so ignorant to the sport that their first yeah. their mind goes to YouTube. And it's because of guys like this. So, you know, we kind of had words on, on his show one time. I, I called in and, um, you know. It was kind of tongue in cheek, but it wasn't. It was kind of, but in the end, I was like, "Listen, bro, we both know the way you're talking, all tough. If I'm in the room with you, you're not gonna say any of this. Let's be honest. Let's be real. You know, like you're you're talking all tough because you're in the studio and I'm away from you. And and you know, let's let's cut it. And it was kind of a joke, but it was kind of serious, you know. And I, th yeah. I think, randomly, I think that he wanted to prove that if he's in the same room with me, he can do, he can be tough. So, I mean, he still caught me with my head turned and I wasn't looking, but he got me with this powder smack behind my head, you know? So uh, I ended up chasing him. I, I caught up to him for us only like a split <laughs> second, but the, the security already was on their way from the moment he smacked me. So, so they got a head start on me, you know? So by the time I got him, I got to him, but the security also got there and we were trying to, I was, they, I was like trying to stay glued to him so I could, so I could hit him, but they were prying me off of me. <laughs> and, uh, well, look, uh, look, since we started the show, it's always looked like somebody is going to have to have a fight with someone. Would it, would it do, would it do any numbers? I don't know. I don't know, man. I didn't expect it to get this far. I, I sometimes worry if his boxing skill is, is up to par and, and I'll look bad and if I hurt him, you know, um, because, I, I, you know, I mean, credit to him. He, he's going after a boxer. Nobody else. None of these other guys are going after <laughs> boxers. I mean, he's he's jumped through. He's jumped the line when it comes to this. But but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's I guess we'll see how it builds. I mean, I'm not really sure. You know, yeah. I, I, right now it's kind of gone viral. That, that that's it was like the smack heard around the world. You know, the powder smack. Yeah. I felt like I got pimp smacked you know, with the powder. <laughs> so, so if you guys think that fight should happen, and you think it should happen here on Boxer, then put it in the comments below, send messages, send videos. I'll, I want to be on the undercard. That's all I'm saying. If, if, we, if it happens, I am on the undercard. <laughs> we'll see. Um, there is one other fight happening this weekend. Before we got into that, it was one other crossover. It is Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh, no, it's not Julio Cesar. Is it Julio Cesar? Julio Cesar Chavez Senior yeah, 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 yeah. Camacho yeah. Jr. Yes, so we have... Uh, Chavez Jr. against Anderson Silva. Oh, Anderson Silva, yes, yes. And and the father and the father is fighting Camacho Jr. next month, I think. Are you being serious? I'm, is that I'm, actually I'm happening? I'm serious. Yeah, I saw I saw a stare down of a press conference over the weekend. It was on Instagram. Yeah, it's happening too. I don't even know what to make of it anymore. I really don't. Right. I don't know. Um, I guess for the fact that we have a UFC goat coming into boxing, um, we have to show it. A small element of, of credibility, but I'm not sure listen, how much. Listen, th th this is actually a risk for boxing. Let me tell you, because Chavez Jr. is so bad, that, <laughs> and Anderson is such a <laughs> and Anderson is such a good athlete that, that there's a threat here. This and 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 the politics of boxing and and the, and the shame is the politics of boxing somehow spun things in a way where they made who you see the Chavez or Jr. a world champion. Somehow they spun it in a way where they maneuvered it in a way in the almost impossible way. That goes to show you that they can do anything they want in boxing. And they made him a world champion. So if Anderson Silva comes in and, and spanks this kid, we've got an MMA guy who just beat up a, an ex-world champion in boxing. You know, and it's, uh, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. 
we'll see how it plays out. I, I'm going to ask you to uh, to give me a prediction, <laughs> I guess. I have I, to. I, I mean, prediction, I really think Anderson's better than him. I'll be honest. I really I really think Anderson's oh. – I, I, yeah, I, I hate to say it, but, I mean, Anderson's a really athletic kind of guy, you know, and, and he fought in that athletic kind of style, you know. If you know, it's not like a regular boxer. It's Chavez Jr. I mean, Chavez yeah. Jr. doesn't even have a, 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 a single fundamental right. I mean, he doesn't even walk the right way in the ring. He just kind of crosses his legs, keeps walking to you. I mean, again, the fact that they made him a champion in boxing goes to show you that they can do anything they want. They can spin anything they want. It's crazy. Well, seeing as I'm, I'm, I'm being an optimist and hoping that we get good performances from fighters that haven't given us any for quite a while... I am going to say that finally Chavez Jr. turns up. <laughs> and it's not, a, let's have it right, it's not a, a huge achievement to have beaten a non-boxer in a boxing fight when it's your sport. But I'm going to go with a Chavez win because I would be absolutely, um, I'm not even sure what the word is, but I, I wouldn't be happy. Put it that way, I would not be happy if Anderson Silva walks into the into the, a boxing ring and beats a former world champion. I just don't think it's good for boxing at all. Yep. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Uh, <laughs> I hope it happens. I hope, I really hope. Chavez, come on, please do something. On this day, 2007, June 16th, Paulie Malinaji, the magic man, became world champion for the first time. Paulie, this must be one of those things that just sticks with you forever. You almost, I'm hoping... You remember almost every detail of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I remember a, a lot about it. I remember the pressure because I lost the Dakota fight the year before and thinking that mm -hmm. I've got a second world title shot a year later. Uh, I had to make good on it. You can take a moral victory the first time, but if you lose twice, it was probably going to take yeah. years before I got another world title fight. So I knew I had to beat Love Morendo. Um, it's kind of a win that is underrated later on because Endo you know, wasn't as – as marketed as marketed as some other guys, but Orlando was very very tough. A guy who he was tough. A guy who he was yeah, tough. A guy who never a yeah. guy who never lost by stoppage. A guy who probably w had already been world champion before, but had got robbed against Sean Bay Mitchell. He was probably he probably had yeah. would have become the WBA champion a couple years earlier if hadn't he had he not been robbed uh, in his Mitchell in Sean Bay Mitchell fight. Then he wins the IBF title and uh, winds up against me. So um, Endo, you know, probably deserved better recognition than he had yep. but um at the time at the time nobody had beat him the way i beat him and that was what was special to me you know it's nobody's it's, it's I, I honestly look i've watched i've watched boxing for as long as you've been boxing and i've never seen wider scorecards yeah yeah i mean never if you look at his i literally have never seen yeah. it it was 106 yeah. 120 yeah. on two of the scorecards yeah because yeah, i dropped them in one round um and i had him some real dominant rounds and again i mean he was very very tough uh if you look at his fight with miguel cotto probably a year and a half before it was crazy if you mm -hmm. look at his fight with sean bay mitchell which is right before the Cotto fight that's why he got that Cotto fight it was um he beat mitchell i mean they robbed him he beat mitchell he should have been the wba champion you know uh so yeah um at that time lovemore was a real handful to deal with so then he kind of ended up fighting late in his career and and lost on points just kind of cashed out against kel brook and and even canelo you know nobody stopped this guy it's yeah. nobody yeah, stopped yeah, this exactly. guy this guy went 12 <laughs> rounds this guy had like a granite chin which i still can't believe I dropped him. I dropped him. I had him with, a, I had him with a nice yeah. straight right hand. I kind of pushed him down with a follow up hook, but I that straight right hand really shook him. You know, um, it was just a really good night for me, real sharp. I've had certain nights in my career where I've just been real, real sharp, and then certain and certain nights, yeah, yeah, then certain nights work. where I look back on it and I'm like, Ugh, what was I doing? <laughs> you know, it's like the consistency. Yeah. And that's why you got to respect somebody like Floyd Mayweather because the Paulie, consistency uh, is crazy. On 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 the day you or on the, the at the weigh in. You weighed in at 138. You, you got in the ring, I think, at, at 148. Were there ever fights or nights, or was this a night where you specifically targeted a weight and knew that you performed best at a particular weight? Um, no, not really. Um, at that time in my career, um, I kind of just would, you know, weigh in. I, it was never easy to make weight for me, but, um, you know, I, sometimes you dry out a little bit more. You know, your scale is a little mm -hmm. bit uh, lighter or heavier than the official scale, whatever. You know, um, mm -hmm. I just knew I was on weight and whatever they ended up saying it said. But um, later on in my career where I was more apt to hold more weight, um, I would try not to gain too much weight. Uh, it wasn't always easy because I realized, like, putting on too much weight would make me sluggish for a guy with my style, you know, yeah. with a moving style. Yeah. But earlier on in my career, 
I think, you know, your body is just so cooperative. It's great, you know, as long as you get yeah. in shape and, and you have a great camp, yeah. your body cooperates with you. It's not until later on where you got to start watching the little things because your body ref starts to starts to betray you and not cooperate with you. So you've got to kind of yeah. do other things. But at that time, at that time, it was just on, you know, it was just, it was camp. It was just working hard, a focus, doing the right things. And things were just kind of coming to play, you know, with my ability. That part really resonated with me because my body is not cooperating anymore. <laughs> I look at food, it's, that, it's automatically how, digested. How, how old are you then? I've had this ankle injury. I'm 31. Yeah. This ankle I'm injury has been it, with me it, for, it changes. for weeks yeah. now. It changes after you hit 30. It's weird. It, it changes. It does. It's, it's just crazy. Um, what, were the, what was the night like? I mean, what was the moment like? You know, you, you end up training and this is almost your life's purpose. You know, you train every day. You go on these runs. You do all these bars. Some people win a world championship and they almost, you know, you, you break down and cry because it's, it's just such a big sense of purpose. You feel like you've fulfilled things. Um, some people would just party and it's on to the next. Uh, what was what was that night like for you? Um, I got a big cut, so I had to go to the hospital. Because, uh, you know, unlike some promoters, my promoter didn't even have a doctor <laughs> in, in, the, in the arena. You know, I didn't find that until I went with other promoters. That other promoters actually spend the money to bring a plastic surgeon and doctor in the arena, so you don't have to go to the hospital for your stitches. So I had to go to the hospital, and and by the time I got done at the hospital with the stitches and everything, there was no time to party. So we didn't party until afterwards. Yeah. But um. How it felt, um, I knew I'd won the fight before the decision. Uh, I knew the last 10 seconds. Yeah. I remember when I heard that 10 second tap, that that that, that right there, you know? Yeah. In, tw in round 12, I put my hands up and kind of ran away from Lovemore because I knew I dominated the yeah. fight. And as soon as the bell rang, I kind of fell to my knees and put my gloves in my face because just, you know, I, just in case yeah. I was getting emotional. Um, that's it. I was just, I, I remember just thinking, wow, I did it. I did it. You know, that's all I was telling myself. I, I've done yeah. it. You know, I, I did it. I, I just dropped to my knees and fell. And then my, I remember I just got mobbed. My whole team just ran in the ring and tackled me. And they kind of, they kind of ruined the moment because I was kind of just like in my own, in my, in my own head, like, wow, I can't believe I've done it. You know, I, can't, I, it's all I, I remember yeah. just all I was saying to myself, you know, I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. And then I just got tackled. <laughs> so, and then, yeah. and then uh, you know, it was cool. I mean, everybody was happy and it was, it's a, it's a night you remember. Well, I guess there is no better way to end the episode than the one that we've just had there. Paulie, amazing winning a world title. Uh, as always, remember, like, comment, subscribe. Send us videos, send us messages, send us questions. Anything you want to see on the show, um, just, just send it in, guys. Send us your training videos, absolutely everything. Thank you to our sponsors, The Turmeric Co. And we will see you next week. Yes, people, I am Savage Dan. I'm Paulie Malanaji. You are watching Mouthpiece, the official boxer podcast. We are two of the most knowledgeable, two of the most charismatic, biggest personality guys in boxing. And we are two of the coolest cats talking about this <laughs> today. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by the Turmeric Co. The Turmeric Co. creates great taste in turmeric shots that harness the power of natural ingredients to support individuals on their wellness journey, offering anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, energy and immunity booster benefits.